Ken is walking through the army camp with Gabriel and Leon by her side. We have just over 1,000 former Stormhawk soldiers under my command. The mercenary force led by Severin was 2,000. I'm pleased to say that all 2,000 mercenaries have pledged their loyalty to you, Connor. That leaves us with a force of 3,000 troops. We'll need more if we're going to retake Stormhawk's castle. But at least it is a promising start. What about the common people of our kingdom? Do you think we can rally them to join us? Word of what you are doing will spread. If your legend reaches them, if it inspires them, they just might fight for you. As Kenna approaches where Leon's men are camped, she sees Jackson. Queen Kenna, something's been bothering me. Please, allow me to speak. What is it? I can't believe I was drinking and playing flinch in front of the rightful Queen of Stormholt. <laughs> There's nothing to be embarrassed about. He kneels before Kenna. Please, your majesty, don't let that lessen your regard for me. I want to pledge my sword to you, Queen Kenna. Your sword? I'll fight for you till my dying breath. Please, say you'll forgive my poor behavior. Jackson, I have no doubt that you will serve me with honor. I will. Always. He leaves, a proud look on his face. That was well handled. Thank you, Gabriel. I have to admit, it feels odd having someone treat me like their superior. It is the way of the military. An ant alone is nothing. An army of ants under the command of one queen, that is another thing entirely. Speaking of, looking around you. As Kenna looks around, those who fall under her gaze stop what they're doing and salute her. Your victory over Severn has had an impact. Much the way a bolt of lightning has had an impact upon a tree. Kenna passes the mercenary section of the camp and crosses paths with Severn. We need to talk, Queen Kenna. My mercenaries will fight without getting paid, but they won't stand a chance against Marco with the equipment they got now. I'll fight for you till the day I die, but I'd rather that be a long time from now. Our leather armor's fine against drunken bandits, but might as well be paper against Nevrakis soldiers. And my men's armor needs repairs badly. So we need coin, and lots of it. Where can we get it? Ever heard of the legend of Aurelia? The Gilded City, east of the Five Kingdoms. I've heard tales of fabled gardens and gold mines, a city rich beyond all imagining. That's the one. If memory serves me, it's also a hidden city, one that would be conquered immediately if its location were known. It is hidden, but I know the way. I've been there. You've been to the Gilded City? I'm surprised you haven't robbed them already. I'd never rob the hand that pays me. Aurelia hired you? Cleared out some bandits for them a while back. Best paying job I've ever done. It won't be easy getting their coin. Don't know if Queen Kenna here is up for the challenge. A challenge? I'm always up for a challenge. I have the utmost faith in you, my queen. Thank you, Gabriel. Let's hope the people of Aurelia feel the same way. Lead the way to Aurelia. Kenna marches with a force of 200 through the forest to the base of a mountain range. This is where things get interesting. The mercenaries get to work, clearing aside a massive pile of boulders. After an hour of work, they've revealed the opening to a secret mounted passage. So this is how they stay hidden? There's a dozen traps and false trails steering travelers away from Aurelia. Believe me, finding the city by any other means isn't easy. After a long journey winding through treacherously narrow mountain passes, Kenna's group reaches a guard post at the outer edge of Aurelia. The city is beyond beautiful. They say Aurelia is gilded by the precious ores mined from its very foundations. Let's hope they're willing to part with some of it. I've managed to recruit an army, but that won't do much good if I can't feed it. Could be. We even get money for Sarah's weaponry. Perhaps. If the legends are true, then Aurelians guard their wealth closely and see visitors as a threat. Guess we have our work cut out for us. Two guards approach. Halt! Outsiders! State your purpose. We are here because we wish to form an alliance. You must have heard that the false king Luther Nevrakis has taken the Five Kingdoms. 
I am the rightful Queen of Stormholt, and I am gathering my army to march against his son, Prince Marco. Your war doesn't concern us. They will. You've only remained safe because Luther hasn't found you yet. Ally yourself with our cause, and we will protect you. Let us speak with your leaders. They will want to hear our offer. The two guards look at each other. Very well. Much appreciated. There's that charm I was talking about. The guards look down at the trail. I'm afraid we can only let a small party through. No more than five people. We can't allow a foreign army inside our walls. Understood. My army will make camp far from your gates. The last thing we want to do is seem threatening. Then you're welcome to come in, provided you leave your weapons with us. Hang on, we have to hand over our weapons? Since when? You have got to be talking. The two guards exchange a brief glance. These are troubled times. It is our sworn duty to ensure the security of Aurelia. Surely you can understand our position. Of course. Kenna looks pointedly at Leon, who grumbles as he hands over his sword to the guards. As others begin to follow suit, Val walks over to her. Here, let me help you with that. As Val helps Kenna undo her weapons belt, she speaks in a voice too low for the guards to hear. I don't like this. They're acting more paranoid than usual. You think they're hiding something from us? Maybe. Maybe something happened to make them even less trusting of outsiders than they used to be. Either way, I feel a lot better if one of us had a weapon, just in case. You got a small blade on you? Something you can hide? I do have a dagger. You really think I should sneak it in? My gut says yes. If my gut's wrong, the Aurelians never need to know. You're right. If something's wrong in Aurelia, I'm not about to go in completely helpless. You're a woman after my own heart. Kenna, Gabriel, Leon, Val and Severin are led into the Golden Hall of Aurelia. You don't think they notice if this golden statue went missing, do you? They have so many. Do not dare. Just a joke. Not like I would really steal a statue, melt it down and sell it to buy a triple-bladed... Hello, travelers. A bejeweled woman adorned in gold approaches, smiling at Kenna, a guard is beside her. Welcome to Aurelia. Oh, she's so shiny. Might want to close your jaw there, Sev. Hello. You must be the ruler of Aurelia. That's exactly right. What gave it away? You've got protection. And only royalty would wear something so magnificent. Aren't you sweet? We're here to speak with you about joining our cause. You must know that King Luther Nevrakis has taken the Five Kingdoms. Yes, of course. I'm current on all the latest gossip. I am Kenna Rees of Stormholt, the rightful queen. The Kenna Rees of Stormholt? I've heard about you. You survived Luther's slaughter when he betrayed and murdered the royalty of the Five Kingdoms. You also escaped an assassination attempt at the Rajka ruins. Is it true you now have an army of mercenaries? It's true. It seems you're practically a legend already. You at least seem to have a knack for surviving. I'm going to do more than that. I've been training, and now I'm raising an army to take back my kingdom from Luther's son, Prince Marco. Oh, how thrilling. They must sing songs about you. Not yet, but we should get someone started on that. Annalise, everyone knows of Aurelia's fabled wealth. It's only a matter of time before Marco finds this city and plunders it. Support our cause. Help us now. And once we've beaten Marco, Aurelia will be under our protection. You have an interesting proposal. But Aurelia has never backed an army. It doesn't make for good gossip. It's hardly intriguing and wars get blood on everything. No, the nobles of Aurelia would positively revolt if I told them we're funding an army. Val whispers to Kenna. Let me talk to this lady. I can convince her that armies make good for gossip. Have you ever seen the sun rising over a battlefield before the first arrow's even been shot? Or riding a horse as fast as he can go into the pitch black night because you're part of a surprise attack? That sounds exciting. And you think you know how to throw a party here? You should see an army of mercenaries after battle. Well, maybe I was wrong. If the nobles could hear you talk, you just might capture their interest. Yes, defeating Marco would be an excellent story.
and one I could see Aurelia being a part of. But it's not entirely up to me. You've got to understand. I'm no warrior queen. I don't rule. With swords and shields, I rule by keeping my nobles happy. That means getting their support for decisions like these. I know. Stay for the celebration. Drink with us. Let Aurelia get the measure of you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. My attendants will provide you with proper attire. If you want to impress the Aurelians, you'll hardly do a dress like that. Proper attire? Ahem. <clears throat> Kenna. A word. Gabriel pulls Kenna aside. A rooster does all he can to not upset a hen house. Speak plainly, Gabriel. We are guests. We should do as our host wishes, especially when we are in desperate need of her support. Very well. But no comments from you on how I look. I will be as quiet as a temple mouse. Kenna turns to Annalise. Lady Annalise, I look forward to changing into proper attire. After being dressed by Annalise's attendants, Kenna arrives at the banquet hall, a feast of food, wine and entertainment laid out before her. Like the glassworks of Yondier, you are a sight to behold, my queen. You're not one to break promises. What happened to not saying anything? Some promises are impossible to keep. He's right. That's the kind of outfit that inspires songs and poems, Kenna. Kenna? Is that you? Didn't recognize you without the layer of dirt. Whoa! This whole time you were pretty. Uh, uh, that didn't come out right. Uh, thank you. Now let's get to this party. Attending a party in order to defeat Marco is ridiculous, if you ask me. Luckily, no one did. We need as many allies as we can find right now. This party will be an excellent opportunity for us. Gabriel's right. Opportunity? What about fun? Come on, everyone. Time to find out if those swans on the tables are just for show. Kenna's people move to the tables. As Kenna goes to join them, she notices a man staring at her from across the room. Ignoring him, she sits down. You're good with a sword, I'll give you that. But anyone who grew up in a fancy castle can learn to swing steel. That said, I bet my armor. All those uptight nobles never let their princess drink anything real. I've drunk plenty. Prove it. Unless, maybe, you think you're better than me at this. Are you challenging me to a drinking contest? I wasn't being subtle. I'll even make it more interesting. If you outdrink me, which no one ever has, I'll make up a song in your honor. Kenna downs an entire glass of wine in one gulp. <laughs> Impressive. That... that was aged in green oak for over a decade. If you're going to be drinking this hard, you'll want something stronger. Annalise slides another goblet in front of Kenna. It's filled with a thick gold liquid. Formerly, it's called Aurelian Nectar, but we've taken to calling it Three Hells Fire. Kenna drinks it down. Oh my god, that is unnatural. Another round. Kenna downs another glass. Whoa, why did the room get all spinny? Now this is a celebration. Kenna downs another glass. I don't feel so good. Don't tell me you're done. I'm just getting started. I'm not stopping any time soon. Not when my honour is at stake. Uh, but does anyone else see three cups right now? Kenna picks up the cup of wine. Her vision clears momentarily and Kenna downs it all. <laughs> I can't believe you're still. Come on, Severin, you owe me a song. Sing while you still can. Severin drunkenly bursts into a song. Can I? She's the best. Can I? Something better than the rest. <sighs> Severin slumps over, his head hitting the table as he passes out. Surprise, he managed a rhyme. I win! A toast to Kenna! She's got the heart of a champion. And the stomach of one, too. Everyone cheers. Thank you. Thank you. The man who was staring at Kenna earlier steps out from the shadows. Lazy Kenna, a pleasure. You've been watching me ever since I got to this party. Not true. 
I've been watching you ever since you arrived in Aurelia. I could have you killed for that. Not true again. And why is that? Because I only allow things to happen that I want to happen, and I wouldn't allow someone to kill me, since I'm rather fond of me. And you are? Raiden, an associate of Lady Annalises. Well, Raiden the Associate, are you saying that I saw you only because you allowed me to see you? Precisely. And why would you allow that? The same reason I allow anyone to see me, either because I'm about to do them harm, or because I find myself desperately attracted to them. Really? Well, I suppose I'm unharmed, so... So, you should be very concerned, but if you wish to continue our conversations more... intimately, meet me in the gardens. He leaves just as Annalise arrives, slipping her arm through Kenna's. She whispers to Kenna. Now that the party's in full swing, I thought we might escape for a private celebration of our own. What do you say? Join me for tonight's real fun. I promise we won't talk about business. Just us. Annalise winks at Kenna and motions for her to follow her as she walks away. Kenna goes to find Gabriel. Did you make new friends? Something like that. You were right. It didn't hurt to relax and forget about Prince Marco for one night. And I have got the good news. I heard the Aurelian nobles talking. They seem to be in favour of supporting us. Let's hope we stay in their good graces. As Dominic and Rose are returning for the kitchen, Dom notices that many of the guards aren't at their posts. Something's going on. No guards? The halls do feel less intimidating than normal. Just then, Dominic catches a young messenger boy heading towards the throne room. Follow my lead, Rose. Of course. Psst! You there, boy! I'm not supposed to talk to anyone. I have to go straight to the throne room. This is a matter of life and death. Surely you can talk for that. Uh, I suppose so. What is it? When you enter the throne room, can you leave the door open just a hair's width? It'd mean a lot to us. Why, so you can spy? Spies are bad. I'm going to... to tell the guards right now. Listen, I'm not a spy. I'm a legendary hero to defeat the bad guys. Huh? Stand watch, Rose. I've got this. Be quick, Dom. Dominic pulls the boy into a small alcove. What are you doing? Don't hurt me. You don't have anything to fear from me. I'm a good guy, just like out of the old tales. Prove it. I can make fire do whatever I want. Concentrating, Dominic makes a fire appear in his hand, the flames glowing an eerie blue. You... you can use magic? You... you are just like one of the legendary warriors. I'm a defender of justice, and if you want to be a good guy too, you'll help us. Yes, I want to be a good guy too. I'll help. Dominic and Rose trail behind the boy as he steps into the throne room, the door left barely open. He sneaks up to the door and peeks in. Here you are, sir. Bartel reads the message. Good news. Our spy says everything is going according to plan. The girl is in the Gilded City now, just as Prince Marco predicted. What about her army? Army? Ha! Huh. She has only a few fighters with her. The rest are outside of Aurelia, and Queen Annalise has kept Kenna and her people there, as order. She's proving rather useful. There will be no escape for Kenna this time. Oh. How surprised she'll be when she discovered that Prince Marco is the one leading his soldiers to ambush her. Oh no, Kenna! 